Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Friday, the 11th of September. I'm Father Eric coming to you from the chapel in Charles House. Morning prayer rite one begins on page 42 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the invitatory psalm, the Jubilate, which begins on page 45 of the prayer book. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. That is Psalm 78, verses 4 through 7, which can be found on page 695 of the prayer book. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. The gospel assigned for this day is the gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning at the 11th verse. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, which begins on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Uh, this morning, I've decided to skip one day ahead in the lectionary and take from the day September 12th, which falls on a Saturday this year, um, the day that's set aside to celebrate the life of John Henry Hobart. John Henry Hobart is one of the leaders who received the, who revived the Episcopal Church following the first two decades of its independent life after the American Revolution, a time that has been described as one of suspended animation. Born in Philadelphia on September 14, 1775,
Hobart was educated at the University of Pennsylvania and Princeton, graduating from the latter in the year 1793. Bishop William White, his longtime friend and advisor, ordained him deacon in the year 1798 and priest in the year 1801. After serving parishes in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Long Island, Hobart became assistant minister at Trinity Church, New York City in the year 1800. He was consecrated assistant bishop of New York on May 29, 1811. Five years later, he succeeded Bishop Benjamin Moore, both a diocesan bishop and as rector of Trinity Church. He died at Auburn, New York on September 12, 1830, and was buried beneath the chancel of Trinity Church in New York City. Within his first four years as bishop, Hobart doubled the number of his clergy and quadrupled the number of missionaries. Before his death, he had planted a church in almost every major town in New York State and had opened a missionary work among the Oneida Indians. He was one of the founders of the General Theological Seminary and the reviver of Geneva, now Hobart College. A strong and unbending upholder of church standards, Hobart established the Bible and Common Prayer Book Society of New York and was one of the first American churchmen to produce theological and devotional materials for the laity. These tracts, as they were called, and the personal impression he made on the occasion of a visit to Oxford were an influence on the development of the Tractarian movement in England. Both friends and foes respected Hobart for his staunch faith, his consuming energy, his personal integrity, and his missionary zeal. We continue our service by saying together the Apostles' Creed, which begins on page 53 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We continue with the Lord's Prayer, followed by suffrages B. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. We continue with the colics for this Friday. Revive thy church, Lord God of hosts, whensoever it doth fall into complacency and sloth, by raising up devoted leaders like thy servant, John Henry Hobart, who we remember this day, and grant that their faith and vigor of mind may awaken thy people to thy message and their mission through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Continue with the collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, 
walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, to the honor of thy name. Amen. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings this day. You remember this day, those who died almost uh, 20 years ago in September 11th. All those lives who were changed, we pray for the families of survivors and remember those who died. We give thanks for the lives of people who are connected to ours, for the lives of those who touch us in community, and for those people unknown to us who uh, are such a blessing in our daily events. We pray for all those who have died. We pray for the leaders of this country and of the world. We pray for wise decisions and for an end to war and violence. We pray for those whose lives are closely linked to ours. We pray especially for anyone suffering or in any type of distress. invite your prayers. Gracious God, for all our prayers offered this day and those that reside silently in our heart, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our service by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining morning prayer this week. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday for worship and again next week on Monday's morning prayer. God bless.